speaker. Did you know it? <laughs> <laughs> Just play. Okay. Okay, there we go. So welcome to this new edition of Positive Parenting um, on, uh, on Zoom. And today I've asked Jessica Ballard to join me for a talk about astrology and parenting our kids. And this was an idea I had a little bit ago. I thought, what if we took each sign and looked at kind of the, the challenges and also the, the enhancements for about lack of a better word of what each child brings to us and see if having insight into what their signs could uh, reflect or, or teach us or illuminate about our own children. And the person that popped to my mind was Jessica. I've known her for a while and um, she's a great parent and a great astrologer. And I thought this would be the perfect fit. So um, that's kind of what we're doing today. And what I want to do before we jump into that piece of it is just have Jessica introduce herself. Cause I know a lot of you who are here on my channel know me, um, but you may not know Jessica. So Jessica, just let us know, um, introduce yourself and kind of like your story, and then we'll get back to this topic. Awesome. Well, I'm Jessica Ballard. I am a consulting astrologer, but I refer to myself as a cosmic gardener because it all started as a farmer and gardener. That was my original planet. <laughs> so I really try to put kind of the natural world with the cosmic world. Um, my business is Starflower Services, and I offer astrological consultations. Um, and all kinds of different um, different products and and you know um, just items to help support tuning in. Um, yeah, and I'm a mom, and I have a nearly grown a grown child who I think likes me, so I feel like I did something. <laughs> but I feel like you know working with our kiddos and knowing a, just a little bit. I don't like. To, I'll just say this. I don't know if you're already going to ask this, but I am not a fan of like overanalyzing your child's chart because then you don't give them room to just there's to be who they are we're just going to project on we do enough projecting on them anyway so I but I think knowing the sun and moon is really important I'm sure we're going to talk about that but yeah yeah and I, yeah. I love that and thank you I'm so glad um that you're here and that you agreed to to do this with me and um, yeah, I mean, one of the things that got me really interested in this is I, I kind of personally follow astrology. So I've had my chart read and I've done all these things. And I was having a lot of questions the last few years about my sun sign and my rising sign, because I was like, gosh, I really identify more with like some of the traits of my rising sign and not always so much with my sun sign. And why is that? And blah, blah, blah. And then when you and I were having this conversation, you were like, well, with our children, the moon is so important. I was like, oh, I didn't even think about that. And so I, there's so much that I don't know. And, you know, so this is really fun for me to learn. So I guess first, let's just give an overview of what sun, as simple as you want to make it for everybody, sun and moon, because that's, I think, where we'll, where we'll go. And it's relationship to us parenting our children and why we wa might want to know what their sun sign is or their moon sign is. Yeah, so I think our, our sun and our moon, those are the two luminaries in our chart. Those are the two light bringers in our chart. And one is uh, the sun um, is really how we develop a healthy ego and sense of self and the things that we need to draw to us to kind of feel confident and feel our motivation in the world. Um, it has to do with, um, well, there's a lot of different things that speak to it, but, but knowing what feeds your sun, which... You can tell that by the sign that your son is in um, really can help you for you, you know, kind of honor those parts about you that you, you know, kind of wonder about, but for your child can make a little sense of maybe certain habits or inclinations that it's like, <laughs> you know, cause our kids are amazing, but also strange. And it's helpful sometimes to know that, but the, the moon, you know, the moon speaks to our inner our inner luminary. And so that's not always seen. And the moon is, the moon can speak to how we are nurtured as children, you know? And so our parents can do a really good job with us or they can also not quite understand it. So the way we carry that in our moon can um, really speak to how we 
care for ourselves and care for others moving forward because the moon is the um the emotional filter it's the it can be the subconscious stuff that we can't always verbalize or even know why it's our feelings i mean it's our the moon is the feelings you know the sun maybe is more of the doing so with kiddos when you know their moon especially when they don't have like the verbiage, you know, they're not able to speak it because most adults aren't able to like speak their feelings. You right. Know? Sometimes just like having a grasp of like, oh, I know these are things that um that feed the moon, right? That would feed, say, a Taurus moon, and you know, that would nurture that. And so we think about, oh, that you know, my kiddo seems to be having a hard time or feeling emotional or or something is going, something is off. What things would help? And and kind of going to the moon first might be a a good place to start because they may not even be able to realize it or speak it, but we can kind of be aware of that or we can try, you know, <laughs> try. And I think that's, what's, what's key here. And so looking at what you just said as a kind of a generalization for all the signs, let's look at a Taurus. So uh, if our child is a Taurus sun or a Taurus moon, what would you say would be the key points for us to keep in mind or look at or what might happen or just any insights that you could give us from parenting a Taurus. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, yeah, I mean, the Taurus is what you would call a fixed earth sign. I mean, it is the most needing of stabilization of security in the zone, you know, if you think about kind of the evolution of the soul through the signs, Aries burst forth and Taurus is like, okay, what do I need, you know, and um, feeling secure, stable, peaceful is really key for Taurus flavored humans. Um, Taurus is very also, it's very instinctual, but tuned into the senses. Sensory things are really powerful for Taurus. Um, as simple as like, hunger being really important, you know, um, you know, touch, taste, Taurus needs, you know, snuggles, they need connection. Um, they're connected with the sign of Venus, which is about, you know, peace and um, things that we value and love. They like to have, they can like to have nice things, but as a child, you know, I think making a Taurus have to share doesn't feel super fair for a very Taurus. I mean, there are ways of teaching that, but also honoring their need to have security. Does that resonate? Do you know what I like when I say that? Yeah. And I mean, I'm thinking about consistency and maybe yes. boundaries. Stability. And right. And that, that things are predictable might be, it is important for all children, but it sounds like for a Taurus, it might be even more important that they have that predictability yeah. in their world. Keeping it a little boring feels really important for a Taurus mm -hmm. because then they have, because their whole goal, right, is like just peace and harmony. I mean, and what happens is you get this meme culture description of Taurus that's like, oh, they're stubborn or they are really sticking to their guns. But really, half the time, it's just because they want things to be stable. It's not this like malicious <laughs> intent. In fact, Taurus is a pretty simplistic sign. I mean, it sees the peace and simplicity, you know, and yeah, having that um, ability to, to just, it, it will fight for, it will be stubborn. And I've seen Taurus children, I mean, lay down, throw up, I mean, I might be looking at somebody who knows this, throw a fit, mommy's leaving, I will lose it. Mm -hmm. I think the best thing you can do as a parent in that situation is to really honor that need for, and know, help that child understand that you are safe. This is different. This is change, but let me show you all the ways that you're safe here. I mean, yeah. It's funny. I, you're talking about um, the, the thing that we do in positive parenting. So in positive parenting terms, we don't call children stubborn anymore because that's right. Parenting. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So we change it and we call them determined and you can, mm. and when you look at that word and you impart that onto a child who previously we called stubborn, which was me totally, yeah, <laughs> my, yeah. my everybody told me I was so stubborn when I was growing up. And, um, and when you put determination on it, it just gives it such a positive spin, but it's still that same quality. And I remember one time with Michelle, my, my middle daughter, and it's interesting because I was writing down, I need to look up and see what her moon and rising is. I wonder if any of them are Taurus. Um, because she was so determined, this child, like so determined. And we used to butt heads a lot. And I remember one time I had been having the 
um, problem with um, her getting dressed in the morning. And I had tried all these different things like <laughs> putting the clothes in the car and doing this and doing that and all my positive parenting ideas and nothing was working. I mean, every day we were having these tearful battles and all this stuff. And the one day that I did put her in the car in her jammies and we were getting to school and her clothes were in the back seat, but she was, she was crying and in tears. And that's when I stopped. I was like, okay, this is not working. I'm not willing to like have her heart broken and sobbing hysterically going to school. And so the next morning, the battles were going to start. And I went into her room and I sat down on the floor and I said, Michelle, I know no matter what I say or do, there's no way I can make you get dressed and ready for school. And I just really admire your determination. I love that about you. I love that about you. Aww. And I just sat there in total, re not resignation, but um, release, like um, letting go and just knowing I I can't do anything about this. And I just sat there and admired her and loved her. And I could see her as an adult, like going for it and making things happen, which she does. Mm -hmm. And, um, and, uh, and, and, and I walked out the door, like, and I wasn't, I wasn't heavy. I was light. I was like, okay. It's like, it's not worth doing this to her, you know, and I don't know what to do instead, but it feels better to just love that. Like you were saying, love that quality about her. And about five minutes later, she came out fully dressed. Oh my and, gosh. And I didn't have the battles anymore. It was done. And so that, you know, you can't, you can't fake, um, I'm missing my word for this. It's not release. It's like, um, res not resignation, but like letting go that, that moment, but you can't, you can't fake that. It has to be authentic. I mean, this came at a point where I was just done, you know, and I let it go. And then the right solution came in, which was, she just decided. <laughs> well, I think she was just honored because just like what you said, you know, stubborn, stubborn insinuates that there's something wrong with them or that they're not doing something right. Whereas determination is like, you clearly have a mission. And just because you can't verbalize it within adult reality, it doesn't mean your, your mission isn't like just as important. Wow. And so maybe I should meet you on your level and be like, wow, I see this is really important to you. I think that's all. Yeah. I think that's awesome. It was, I mean, that's a story I share every parenting class. I don't remember mm -hmm. what context it comes in, but it's just, it's so, it's so, oh, when we're teaching and when I'm teaching about power struggles, that's when this usually comes mm -hmm. up. And it's mm -hmm. like, you know, if you're button heads, I mean, sometimes the only thing to do is let go and regroup and try to figure a different tactic because there's certain lines I'm not going to cross, you yeah. know? Yeah. And, and it's just, it's just not worth destroying a child over this, you know, mistaken need that we parents feel to control the situation. And so that's I mean, a lot. Of and they'll just take that in <laughs> to adulthood to feel like they don't have the right to honor their determination and what drives, I mean, there are boundaries that are healthy, right? Yes. But then there's also just being with them. I, you know, I have an, can I share actually Absolutely. a similar story a, about a Taurus to, child? Yeah. yeah. Um, I love it. And a thing to just to throw this out there with Taurus, with the sensory piece, with the nature, I find that Taurus really loves um, having a snack, you know, having, having food in their belly or a treat or something that makes them feel good or something beautiful. And so I have a really good friend who I had not seen through all of COVID. And um, we were like, we're going to take a walk. Um, okay. We're going to just take a walk one afternoon and we were going to walk to the store and she was going to get some grocery items for the family. And, and then we were going to walk by, I mean, it was like a 30 minute, it was maybe just a quick see each other. Right. And it's like, I'll build this into your day. You know, her kids are little, mine are grown and we get there and her tourist daughter with the Capricorn moon too. So it's like double earth, like holding it down this child. And I know this friend will know it because she'll probably listen to this. <laughs> this child wasn't having it. And she was, I mean, she threw a fit beyond, I have never seen it beyond all fits. I mean, she was so upset, but she was upset. You know, she wasn't like being a brat because mommy wouldn't go. She was upset. Like it was really messing with her security and stability. And like thinking about that, well, you've been in shutdown at school with, you know, mom doesn't leave very often. Everybody is working from home. And it was so beautiful it was so beautiful to see mom, to be able to just watch and witness mom 
hold continued space for that. I mean, it took us like 45 minutes to leave. Like this child was running down the street. I mean, and dad was like, there was something about, I don't want it, you know? But it was really beautiful to watch mom continue to commute. I see that you're upset. I need you to know you're safe. I will be back. I'm going to get you a treat. You know, she definitely was going to get that, you know, food reward, which maybe we can over the, but for a Taurus, I think there is something to like, I'm going to bring you something tasty. Um, and just really like working with her through it. And I just remember talking with mom when we finally made it to the store of like, you did the best parenting you possibly could, you know, cause she's kind of a, maybe, I don't think she was embarrassed cause we're so close, but you know, when your kid is like, you know, <laughs> It's a little embarrassing when they're screaming through the neighborhood, like you're abandoning them when all you do is live your life. (laughs) But I was so proud of her. I mean, I just told this friend, I'm like, I'm so proud of you. You, you, you left because you kind of needed to leave because that had to show her that she was okay. And you had to, the boundary has to happen a little bit, you know? Um, So I like that. I like that. So this is, yeah. yeah, So this is describing that Taurus child. So the boundaries and the safety, and I love Mm -hmm. that um, you know, you're, you're safe. I'm going to be back. Everything's going to be good. Like mm-hmm. to, to really reaffirm that they're, they're okay. I, I yeah. love that that's a unique quality for Taurus because right. we see that in children all the time. Right. And yeah. not everybody, it's just some kids. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Love it. Love it. Very good. So, so Again, I this thing with the sun and the moon. Could this happen with a Taurus moon sun or a Taurus moon? Or how how would you kind of help me see in my brain? Yeah, I mean, I think with the Taurus sun, maybe it would be a little more obvious, you know, more externalized. Um, with the Taurus moon, I think, I think, and this is just me, I don't have a Taurus moon child, but um the ways that you might see that stuff come out that aren't as obvious, like if they're not feeling, you know, secure, or if they're feeling like things are off or out of alignment. Um, And really just knowing, I think the go-to toolkit to help with Taurus. I mean, obviously that sense of safety and security that we keep and peace, you know, a chaotic environment is not ideal for Taurus to, you know, if ever, that's that's really destabilizing but also going back to the kind of the somatic connection with Taurus around um just the bodily senses you know peaceful music going outside looking at nature crystals I find that Taurus really let you know they love beauty and they love nice things and so sometimes crystals are really neat I this is the same Taurus really loves rocks and they actually really calm her and she has a real connection she was really little um but straight up food I mean really like I have seen a Taurus like because Taurus are really a friendly sign I mean they're really they're just friendly you know typically but oh my gosh when they're hungry it's like what (laughs) and I've seen that you know where it's like knowing that oh, I'm seeing you're not as, so, you, you know, things are off. Maybe let's start with just a snack or a hug. You know, those, and I, maybe that sounds really generic parenting, but I think for Taurus, that's a really key, key piece that they need to understand that, that body connection a little bit more. You know what this I mean? Is, this is just making me think more and more my middle daughter, Michelle, may have a Taurus moon because that's what we were talking about. Like, I didn't understand, like it wasn't overt, you know, it was more, you know, and the, and it was like this whole right. transition that happened. It was kind of at that feeling level. There wasn't direct communication about the whole thing. It was like a feeling and maybe her being seen and heard and understood allowed her to make mm-hmm. the transition or whatever. Mm-hmm. And, um, and she and I have definitely always and still bond over food. <laughs> it's great. So I'm looking that one up. So let me also have you, cause we're, we're, um, we have about 10 minutes left let me have you just help parents maybe they're like me very newbie to astrology for our children how would you ask um invite them to start like how would they find out what their child's sun star sun moon um rising might be um and we'll put um, whatever you say here i'll make links and put it in wherever we post this good yeah well i would just start with keep it so simple 
don't overthink it because then you're going to like overanalyze your kids. And we already do that all the time. Like it's so easy to do. Um, But you can go to, there's a lot of different places online that you can go pull up a chart. I like astro.com. It's a pretty common one. And what you're going to need is your child's birth, you know, birth date, birth year, where they were born and the time. And the time is important for the moon. It's more important for the full chart, but at that point, you should be able to pull up like, you know, you won't be able to read the circle necessarily, but it should say sun, you know, sun, Leo, moon, Gemini. And, you know, from there, you have that little bit of information and then a small amount of Googling, <laughs> perhaps in a lot of listening, you know, um, is really helpful because you start to see how that, because our, you know, we all have a different kind of cocktail of how those signs and planets come through us. We don't want to pigeonhole our kids ever, right. even if it's, you know, helpful or we think it's helpful. So. Right. So, so that would be at the very basic level. Just look up on an astro.com. I'll go look it up and figure out how it works and then post the link there. Yeah. You what your child's sun and, and moon sign are. And because we're going to do this every month. So next month, we're going to talk about Gemini, which is me. Yay. And, um, yeah. That's so find one. out what your, what your child is. And then, um, and then if you want more in depth, I mean, Jessica does chart, so you can, I'll put her link to her website. You yeah. can hire her to do a chart for you or for your child or whatever. And she'll, she'll do all the pulling up and putting it together and then help you with what, you know, learning what you need to learn for your, your, your connection and your, your, um, sun sign moon sign, all that stuff. <laughs> and I think that can be really helpful. Like I don't look at a ton of charts for children, but it can be helpful to, from a really conversational piece in a reading to know some of these bigger rites of passage when kiddos are dealing with like, you know, planetary transit that each kid goes through, maybe things that have to do with the planet Saturn or Jupiter, you know, you might see really strong things coming up around those transitional times. And that can be good to kind of see that coming. You know, we have a vague idea, but right. it can be helpful to see where that's the flavor of that in the chart. So yeah. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah. So we'll have links below or above or beside or wherever they go. And so that you can find this. Another question that I had that came up when you were talking about the Taurus child and the sensory issues, have you, do you have any anecdotal evidence of sensory processing disorder, parent, children with that? And if they may have a Taurus link? Oh, I have no idea about any of that. That would be really interesting. Yeah. I, I, I mean, there's a lot more research happening, but I, yeah, I don't know anything. I mean, this is just, you know. Yeah. So if you, if you have a child with sensory processing disorder that you, or you're working with all those feelings and, you know, too much sensory input that they go mm -hmm. get get nutty um see what they're see what's in their chart see if they have a Taurus maybe that's part and of see what their moon is like period because whenever okay. you know what their moon is you know sometimes you it can help you to know what they need for nurturing that they can't always verbalize you know and I oh just a, a quick nod if you have a Taurus child keep somehow connecting them with nature animals, any way that they get to kind of know the natural world, that is so helpful and just the grounding part, like rooting back into nature. Some kind, even if it's a pot of flowers that they nurture or a, a dog or something, that really, just those very natural world type things, so. Yeah. Sounds great. Okay, so I think that's good for this month. What do you think, Jessica? I think we hit on a few good tips. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. And so next month we'll, we'll bring in Gemini. We'll talk to uh, parents of Gemini children and we'll um, we're still working how we're going to do this. I may make it into a masterclass and we'll see how, yeah. how that works out. So, um, but yeah, I love this. I love all the, um, I love all the insights because to me, I am like you, I, I want things practical. I don't want to over psychoanalyze. I'm all about dealing with the behavior with the kids. And so, you know, I, when I can hear stuff that's so grounded in practicality, like, you know, okay, we're, we're dealing with a determined child. So we need to make sure we give them a lot of useful ways to feel powerful and acknowledge their determination and, 
get them out in nature and make sure they're very grounded and in the earth and the crystals and all that stuff. I mean, always pack hey. snacks. Don't force them to share until they're ready. Yeah, I mean, I, I think for, there's having some practical. possession, like having things that are just theirs. Can I, before we end, can I just get a shout out to my friend who's a Taurus mom? Did you, Absolutely. did this align at all? Absolutely. Christy, I'm totally putting you on the spot. Did you feel, does any of this, can, is that okay? Yes, we're going to ask to unmute and I'm going. Can you to... just give us a quick, if you, your, if you resonate with any of this with your Taurus? Oh yeah, you were describing my child. Um, he needs <laughs> snacks. <laughs> Cuddles. <laughs> I love the word determined because I mean, he is very determined and I, I found myself just saying, why are you so stubborn? So that really mm. is very helpful for me. Um, and I loved your story and I can't wait to do that with him. Aww. Yeah. I love um, it. Thanks. The nature, the stability that all resonated. He loves nature. He loves snakes, any kind of animal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Great. <laughs> I know. <laughs> this, this was very helpful. Oh, awesome. Thanks, Christy. <laughs> All right. Well, with that, thank you so much, Jessica. And thank you, Christy. And I appreciate everything that you're doing. And I'm excited to do this together again next month with Gemini and Yay. beyond. <laughs> Yay. Me too. This is fun. You're the best. All right. <laughs> awesome. All right. Bye, everybody. Take care. Bye. See ya. <laughs>